let's go. They've got everything. Everything caravan and camping. They've got everything. Yeah, very good day and great to have you with us for our Everything Caravan and Camping podcast sponsored by ECC Parks. I'm Scotty Hillier from Channel 7 and we look forward to taking you to a different destination around this great country of ours every week. Now we're going to get you there safely with our weight and towing masterclasses. We've also got tech tips. Now we're going to chat with influencers and we're also going to chat with you, the listeners. And I'm looking forward to that. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear if you're out and about where you've been. And we're also going to have a laugh with Caravan Park Confessions. That is going to be a good one. And every week we're going to chat to the greatest chef ever given an open fire and a set of tongs. None other than the great Harry Fisher from Fire to Fork. I'm pretty pumped. Let's get into it. ECC, it's a 24-7 marketplace for all things caravanning, camping and 4x4. Now, with more than 10,000 products available from hundreds of popular brands, you'll find everything you need for your next outdoor adventure. Don't forget, subscribe to the newsletter and save a further 10% off the best brands, products and prices, they're only a click away. Let's go. Okay, it's that time of the podcast to head around this great country of ours, whether it be Australia or New Zealand, and profile one of the ECC parks. And today we're heading to tropical North Queensland, all the way up to Cardwell, the little Cardwell van park, and catching up with Cole. G'day, mate. How are you? Oh, I'm good, Scott, and yourself? Well, good. Now, you and I are actually mates. Our boys went to school together in the great town of Ingham. But they did, yeah. And what else? A few years ago now, but yeah, I know. they've grown up. We're getting old, and, and we've actually... was. Oh, well, we're getting old. I oh, know, mate. Don't yeah. remind the listeners. And we were also together. We used your van park when that nasty big cyclone Yazi came through, and we were there doing a bit of filming and carrying on at the park as well. That we did. We might have had a cold beer or two, did we, Cole? We, we probably did. <laughs> now, I, I love it. It's fairly normal up here to have a cold beer. <laughs> oh, I know. And, mate, you're part of the furniture. Exactly how long have you been up there in Cardwell? In Cardwell, I've been in this park for 24 years, 11 months, two days, <laughs> and 23 hours and 37 minutes. <laughs> now, that, that is one of the best answers I've ever heard. In other words, you've been there a long time. <laughs> Yeah, I've been there a long time, and I know it by heart now. It started as a joke after I'd been here for 20 years, yeah. and I just learned it. I just look at the computer, and I know the day and the date that I took over and the time, and it's, oh, it's very easy for me to calculate. It must mean something, because a lot of people, that's that's a big stint, Cole, so you must love the area, and it is a good part of the world. Yeah, look, I, love, I do love the area, and look, I love the industry. There's very few people that stay in one park for 25 yeah. years, and coming up to 25 years, yeah. but I've actually been in the industry for 46 years. Oh. I started in Kansas in 1977. There you go. Building a park with my father. And you're only 40. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> ah, you're a kind oh, fellow. Yeah, oh, yeah well, Now you're supposed to tell me I'm 30. So not. Uh, no, not. Yeah, not. So let's talk Cardwell. So you're approximately, or well, just under 1,500 k's from Brisbane, which is around 16 hours, give or take, to get up there. You're a couple of hours north of Townsville, and you're obviously a few hours south of Cairns. So people travelling your way, There's no excuse not to drop in, whether they're doing the whole East Coast, because Carmel is right in the middle there. It's a nice little stopover point. It is a beautiful little spot, and it's pretty much halfway between Cairns and Townsville. Yeah. So a lot of people do use it just as a morning tea or a lunch stop, but it's a lovely little spot to to stop into. It's also, if you're driving from Brisbane and you talk about that 1,500 k's, it's the first place you actually see the ocean. Coming from the Gold Coast, you can see the ocean driving on the number one on the Gold Coast. Yep. And then you get a little glimpse just coming down the hill at Clearview. You get a little tiny glimpse, mostly of salt pans at um, Bowen. Yep. But until you turn that corner as you come into the township of Cardwell and the number one highway actually hits the coast, and there it is in all its glory, the, the ocean and the, all the islands just off the coast. And Perfect, It's a beautiful part of the world. It is, no, it is. As you, I lived up in Ingham for many years before I got into the television side of things. I was, now no one's allowed to boo out there listening, I was a fishing inspector. Oh, and as you know, Kyle, Cardwell was all of our area, all the way up to Mission Beach. So I was a yeah. boy in blue zipping around, and let me tell you, there was a lot of fishing done. <laughs> there was a few boats inspected. But, mate, give us a sell on, on, on your beautiful park. Tell us all about it. So if people listening are planning a trip, they're going to stop in and say good day. Yeah, we're a, we're a small little park. There's three parks in town. We're the only caravan park that's not on the highway, so we're a couple of streets back towards the mountain, yep. which gets us away from the highway noise and all the rest of it. So it's a very sleepy, peaceful, 
very quiet little place. We've got 48 sites and seven cabins. Nice. Uh, nice big camp kitchen, nice big amenities, so, you know, quite large showers and toilets, so plenty of room to move around. You don't bump your shoulders when you're yeah. trying to have a wash and that type of thing. So that's us in a nutshell. We're yeah. a little, I'd call it family-operated business, but these yeah. days, as your boy has grown up, my yeah. kids have grown up and moved away. So I'm here by myself these days. <laughs> yeah, I'm Solo hearing. operator. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it hard for me to go fishing. Oh, yeah. How dare they buy a house and move out? Yeah, eh? but I know, it breaks oh. our heart. But for people <laughs> listening, talking about fishing, Barramundi, one of the Barramundi capitals you know, of, of tropical North Queensland. You've got the guard, you've got all the oil, Gould Island Garden. For those that have a boat, very accessible. Uh, there's also fishing along the banks there for mangrove jack. You get your, obviously, the barramundi. You get the big grunty. You get the salmon. You're pretty sport when it comes to fishing. And the mud crabs up there, you know, we're talking over a kilo, kilo and a half. Some of the biggest muddies I've ever seen. And they can be put in the pots land base if you walk up to a, towards a couple of the creeks. Fishing-wise and, and recreation-wise, there's plenty to do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. As you say, nice good jetty too. Yeah. There's the rock walls for the marina that you can get out and throw a lure or throw a crab pot off. Yeah, perfect. And as you say, it's easy to walk to some of the creek mouths and get get your crab pots in. You see the crab pots, people walk out and put them out on low tide just off the beach and wait for the next low tide and go out and retrieve them. Yeah, exactly. And those bringing boats, there's a couple of easy access boat ramps, all tied back at the marina. And then is it Meunga Creek, the little? I'm just testing that. Yeah, Meunga oh, Creek. Yeah, geez. unfortunately... But at the moment, they're not, they're not. We won't deceive the listeners. They're not all tied, unfortunately, because okay. the government won't dredge our, our boat ramp. Okay, so, so we, we do need a little bit of a yeah. tide. Yeah, yeah, you work the tides, and and it's fine. But it's, it's well protected. Is the main thing too. We should say all weather, not all tide, all, all weather. Yes, so they're in, they're yeah, protected. It's all weather. And yeah. look, hopefully, we've been pushing for a long time, and they have got a little bit of money to to get some works done. Hopefully, yeah. later this year, we will start to see some dredging happening. And Lovely, mate. And still, t- it's yeah. still a good access. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, it is. And in, in terms of if people want to walk and get a coffee or there's a couple of little restaurants and cafes, it's all pretty close to where you are as well. You're pretty well out there. Yeah, I'm right, in, I'm right in the middle of town, basically, a couple of blocks and you back up onto the beach and the, and the jetty, Vivia's Cafe, Seabreeze Cafe, okay. they're all within a five-minute walking distance along with the pub, the country club, the golf club's only 500 metres from my back gate. Okay. If, if you like golf, you like fishing, you like nice, quiet places to stay, this is the place to do oh, it. Look at you upselling, Cole. Look at you go. <laughs> but I do know it is a very special part of the world. Hey, can we have pets at your little park? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah bring your pets. And I'll and I tell you what, if you bring your dog yep. and your dog vouches for you, I'll let you stay as well, Scott. <laughs> That's quite funny. I've got a little convertible that I'll probably bring along. But, mate, I know you're only a small park and people tend to look ahead. They need to be booking. Where can we get in contact with you? What's the best way to, to give you a call or flick you an email or jump on the website? Yeah, you, you can flick me an email. We do have a website, but I, being a one-man operation, I don't yeah. take uh, online bookings. Yep. But give me a ring is is generally the best way. If you're Love booking it. further ahead, emails, yeah, give me a day or two and I can get back to you on emails. I try and get them every day, but yeah. some days things go wrong. I had a washing machine break down this morning, so that's going to throw a big spanner in my afternoon's work. Literally. Literally. Yeah. We'll throw Literally. <laughs> yeah. and, and, well, I'll throw a spanner in your hand to fix yeah. it. And I guess they so, go, yeah, get, just Googled yeah. Cardinal Van Park. Absolutely. We'll pop up there, no problem at all. And, of course, on the on the Family Parks and ECC websites, we'll be yeah. all over those too, and Caravan in Queensland, of course. Yeah, lovely. Not hard to find us, but give us a flick us an email or uh, give us a bell and have a chat. Lovely. We'll, we'll have nothing better than having a chat to, to people. It's good. Good on you, Cole. Great to catch up again, mate. And uh, to all the listeners out there, I can vouch Cardwell is a little piece of paradise up there in, in tropical. North Queensland. Absolutely, it certainly is. Good on you, mate. We'll speak again. No worries. Thanks, Scott. You have a great day. And just a reminder that there are 65 parks throughout Australia and New Zealand. Now, if you head to everythingcaravancamping.com.au today, you can purchase an ECC Park slash Family Parks Travel Rewards membership for a ridiculous low 30 bucks. So that is cheap. That's your membership there. And it's going to give you 10% off your stay at all ECC Parks, Family Park destinations right throughout Australia and also New Zealand. So it's definitely worth getting. Discounts and deals while you travel with their rewards. You, you get a third night free free voucher and an entry card to their frequent camper competition. So seriously, jump onto the website and get yourself that $30 membership. It is worth every cent. Let's go. Everything caravan and camping. I hope you are enjoying this, our Everything Caravan and Camping podcast. It's that time of the show. 
people, they're starting to cheer all around the world for this man. It's our weight and towing masterclass, Gary Gardner. Fans all over the world, as I said. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks, Scotty. How are you doing today? Yeah, I am flying. I went and had a fish flying? yesterday. Yeah, went and had a fish yesterday. Got a couple of whiting off my little local beach at Mark Cooler there on the sunny coast. Yeah, nice. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you, did you get the fillets <laughs> I sent you? No? Yeah, no, it must be in the post. Yeah, oh, yeah. Every caravan show, I promise you guys a feed of prawns when I'm doing a bit of a cook-up. Have I ever given you anything? Ever? I don't think I have. Have I? Oh, I love you. Hey, mate, today got a big one. I had plenty of people asking about brakes, brake controllers, and uh, I said, I have a man that can talk about that. Brake controllers, mate, what can you tell us? Yeah, brake controllers, they're that product that's fitted to your car that it's just sometimes a mystery. If your van's your van weighs above a certain weight, you do need to have brakes, and if it weighs another, you know, above another certain weight, you do need to have brakes on all wheels, so there you need to have a brake controller fitted into the car to control those those magnets and those brakes on your caravan. Yeah, anything, any van that weighs less than 750 kilos, it, it won't have brakes on it at all. No. But anything above that will generally have generally have electric brakes fitted to it. You know, electric brakes have certainly become the, the more popular option over the last 10 or 15 or 20 years, maybe. Yep. So, the, yeah. That's where it's, it's up to really to the van manufacturer. They will know how much their van weighs when they build it, and they'll put the appropriate braking system up on the caravan, that is, yep. to make sure the, the brakes are going to work correctly when they need to. What about the, the brake controllers you can add to the car as well? Yeah, that's where you need them. Yeah, you, yeah. you do need that. If you've got electric brakes on your caravan, yep. you do need the controller inside the motor vehicle be able to control those brakes correctly. Yeah, and what's some examples, Gaz, where you may have to... Some, I've heard different stories where you need to give them a bit of a touch to straighten the van up, or they just work if you put the brakes on the vehicle, that's when they'll kick in. Yeah, firstly, you do need to have it adjusted correctly so that when you do put your foot brake on in the car, yep. it brings the van brakes on to the same ratio or the right amount of power as well. That's just normal, everyday driving. Yep. Then all your brake controllers... Every single one that's for the Australian market should have a manual override function or emergency override function. Yep. So where you press a button or slide a little lever across or a spring-loaded switch on the front, when you apply that, it brings just the caravan brakes on. Oh, and the yep. main reason you might use that is if you're going down the highway and you, you know, for whatever reason, the van just gets a little bit of a wander up behind you. Yep. And it's not enough to necessarily engage one of your sway control systems, but you can just press that manual override function you to bring the caravan brakes on and that'll bring the car and caravan back into a straight line and give you more chance of slowing down and being in control. They did a bit of a blitz on the caravan industry not long ago, didn't they? Travelling with all the right gear, all the weights, that's a big thing. Road safety is massive now for the RV world. Yeah, we've, we've noticed that with our masterclass sessions that the road safety message, it is getting out there. We still need to get as much information and I'll say the right information. Is yeah, that's right. So-called know-it-alls or, you know, yeah. some media experts that, that think they know what they're doing, but they've probably got half an idea, but you need to make sure you talk to the right experts who live and breathe this stuff and yeah. they get that brake controller fitted and adjusted correctly to suit your car and caravan. Look at that. I knew you would answer that question first, Gary. So, mate, Total Towing Setups, that's your website and uh, you're on Facebook as well under the same title. Uh, how am I going under the same title? Under the same name, my friend. That's me, yeah. You definitely find me on there. There you can. And also, if you've got any questions, shoot them into me. Podcast at everythingcaravancamping.com.au. Have a good week, Gary. You too. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this, our Everything Caravan and Camping podcast. It's time to catch up with the great man, the great Charlie Graham, with our tech tip. How are you going, Charlie? You had a good week? Oh, Scott, I'm going great. And your intros have just been oh, very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> I, took, I took you up. I'm waiting for you to talk me up back, but that's okay. <clears throat> I just keep everyone. Oh, mate, you need, you need no introduction. <laughs> I can talk myself up, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, we're talking, as, once, as I just said, it's all about tech tips. The Q Box. Tell me that. Tell me about that, mate. This is leading on for our Verse Minds last week. Now, this is all part of that awesome new van movement that's going on. Yep. Now, this is just a nice and easy way to go camping in your van, especially if you're someone who uses it through the week to go to work in. Oh, okay. Tell me more. I, I need more. I'm just a poor old dumb fisherman. What, what, tell me more. Well, <laughs> so this is a awesome – it's a camping box with a fold-out bed on top. So oh. the idea is that we can pick this up, put it in our van, strap it down, go away for a weekend, fold the bed frame out, can open it out. I've got the fridge slide. I've got the camping setup. I've got storage space. I've got absolutely everything I could need for a quick weekend trip away. There you go. And the biggest thing is simple. You're there, you're packed up, you're set up, ready to go within minutes. 
having your first cold beverage or your cup of tea or whatever you like, whatever your flavour is. Might be a little glass that's lemonade, it, like you and I, only you, drink lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You would know as well. You also, you, sometimes it can be that last minute trip where you're like, no, nah, I'm yeah. going. And then, and and then I've done. Yeah, and they're normally the best, aren't they, Charlie? They're the spur of the moment. You know what? Look at the missus or your mates. Let's do something. Let's go. I can, from personal experience, I've shot down to Byron Bay and I've enjoyed it. And a nice, easy weekend. I haven't had to book any accommodation. I pull up at the beach there. You've been there before. You know exactly yeah. what it's like. Yeah. I can open up the van and there's the water. I'm ready to go. You are ready to go. Oh, it's Tech Tips with Charlie Graham. This is going worldwide soon. Good, good on you, mate. We'll chat next week. Awesome, Scotty. Thanks, mate. Okay, Caravan Park Confessions. I don't know why I smile when I say that because some of the stories. <laughs> I'm reading the line here on the paper and it's like I'm smiling before I read it. Jason Filippini, how are you, buddy? Oh, Scotty, it is a great day. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm dealing with a lot of emails, people saying, hey, you can't be saying that, and people doing different things in your parks. But that's what we're here to tell you. That's what Caravan Park Confessions are about. There's no... There's no limit. There's no filter on my mate Jason, is there? There's no filter. <laughs> it's all truth. There is no. There is no BS. It I is 100 percent fact. I love it. All right, mates. And 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 by the way, we we're not mentioning which park it's happened at. And you manage and look after that many different parks. It could be anywhere. I've had a few people email in and say, "What parks did that happen in this?" And saying, "No, we're not telling you. We you, we're just going to say yeah. broadly, it's happened at a park. And I guess it's it's one of many things that happen at parks. But mate, what this week have you got? Oh, look, this this is another great curler out of the annals of, of holiday park management. There's a guy, he drives in, he's, he's from out western Queensland, I believe, and he's got a fifth wheeler and he's an old cow cocky type guy that can fix anything. His wheels driving in fell off the caravan. What? He's towing a van so, and the wheels have fallen off. He had two wheels fall off the, the fifth wheeler as he came around the corner. You're, and you and you were there, or someone's told you it's been witnessed. This happened. I, 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 I was there. I was there. I've actually got a line in the asphalt where he continued to drive, where the drum uh-huh. just drove a line through the asphalt. And do we know why did he? He must, for a man from out west, that does everything he He must have been embarrassed. What he said is he stopped on the side of the road and he would played with his bearings and done some stuff because he thought they were getting a bit hot. And he mustn't have done them up tight enough because by the time he got into the park, the wheels were falling off. Jeez. I can't believe he didn't tighten his nuts up. Oh, that's funny. He didn't tighten the nuts up. <laughs> yeah, but, but you must, people driving in, yeah, you must see it all towing things, vans that haven't been packed down correctly and stuff sticking oh, out. Look, we, we see everything. We see hatches left open. We see wheels falling off. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. see things that are overweight. We see, I had a Bentley towing a caravan the other day. A Bentley? Wow. The, a Bentley uh, towing a caravan. Right. These are things, and it is amazing what people drive in with. Oh, unreal. Caravan Park Confessions, Jason Filippini. Thank you, mate. Speak next week. See you then, Scotty. <laughs> Here we are, Everything Cameron and Camping Podcast. Time to hit the road. We've got an influencer today. Actually, I met these guys at the Brisbane show last year and four boys in a caravan, Tom and Amy, and we've got Tom on the line. How are you, mate? Yeah, you're going well, Scotty. Really well, mate. Yeah, that's the way. Firstly, tell us a bit of backstory. Uh, I love, obviously, four boys in a caravan. I'm a fisherman, but I can work that out. But basically, on yep. the road with four kids. Yeah, that's exactly right, mate. We basically sold up in Melbourne, We're originally from Melbourne, and wanted to uh, to do one lap around Australia back in the start of 2018. Wow. Yeah. Went to do one lap around Australia and completely fell in love with their lifestyle, mate. And, yeah, and, you, and you're still going. And we're still going, mate. <laughs> yeah, we never planned it at all. Is that right? Is, we, it, is that right, Tom? So it really was just going to be yeah. a suck and see, and you're still going and you love it and you're yep. going to continue to go. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, we, we just oh, we, we're just thriving as a family. Yeah, doing this kind of exploring and adventuring and lifestyle. To be honest, now yeah. we, we've you know a lot of people travel with kids. Four boys. I guess everyone out there listening is going, Scotty, ask how old, how old are the boys? <laughs> the youngest was still in nappies when we left, so he was just turned two. So we're, they're now the oldest is 14, 11, 10, and about to turn eight. Tom, I've got two oh, boys, yeah. and I flat out having yep. them in the house. Four in the <laughs> van, but <laughs> I mean, obviously it's working out well, but it must have its moments. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got to say, mate, the first six weeks when we yeah. basically went up through in a job and sold the house and hit the road, it was really tough. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was, I was pulling my hair out. I was ready to go home. I, yep. said, I can't be with the kids 24 7. This yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Amy gave me a bit of slap around the head and said, get over yourself and <laughs> yeah. enjoy it. You'll never get this opportunity again. No, so true. So obviously, a few of them are homes- homeschooled or do they? We homeschool all of them now. So we did yep. this for yep. about 12 months and just struggled with that with the amount of work we had yes. to do for each kid. So now we homeschool. So we're good on you. Both Amy and myself teach the kids. And we do about an hour and a half a day, and that's probably about it. That's it. That is it, mate. Tell us, everyone wants to know, where are you right now? Where's the fam? Yeah. Oh, we, we're up in Airlie Beach, the beautiful Airlie oh, Beach. Doing it. Doing it, bloody. Oh. I, I guess the weather's fantastic as well. The weather, <laughs> yes, it is on point. Absolutely on point here. Oh. With, yeah, it's one of our favourite parts in Australia. Yeah, fantastic. And before Ely, tell us a couple of spots you've been and where you plan on going after Ely. Oh, we've pretty much done pretty two full laps of Australia now. What? Have and, you really? You know, wow. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've been around twice and we've done being left right there all over the joint. Yep. And I've got one camp spot, which is my absolute favourite in the whole of Australia. Yeah. And that's the place called South Lafroy on the Ningaloo Coast over in WA. Mm. Just between Coral Bay and Exmouth. And it, it's like you parked your van on the beach. Yep. You wake up in the morning and you're snorkeling, you're fishing, you're everything. Like, you don't need a boat or anything. You just swim out and it's just incredible. Wow. And, and mate, I guess also people, I can just read people's minds, four boys, what, what van are you towing? Yep. How, and yeah. what's towing it? What do you get? What's getting you around? <laughs> yeah, yeah so we, we've, got a, we've got a litre gold, 25-foot quad bunk caravan. Okay. We've lived in it for now. This is our second litre. We've yep. been in this. We were in our first one for four and a half years. Yep. And we decided to, uh, to freshen it up. Yep, good. We can get a new one. So, yeah, and we, we tow it around with our, our trusty old 100 series Land Cruiser. Perfect, mate. Yep. Perfect. Where? Just ticked over 400k. Have you really? <laughs> Yeah. And he telling me, oh, we didn't. I didn't even want to want to do it. We were just going to go for a month or two. You know, yeah, yeah, thousands exactly. of yep. clicks. Good on you. And I guess along yep. the way, mate, what have you loved about it, Tom? What, uh, what, what what's in the it? The biggest just... thing for us was just connecting as a family. To be honest, isn't that good? Like, and that's how it was planned out. We didn't plan it to be like that, yeah. but we just felt like us as a family. Like this is just really working. Yeah. Like this is everyone is having the greatest time. There's no fights, no tantrums. Isn't and it's good? just getting to see my kids grow up. And we still have our fights and tantrums every now and then, yeah. but no one here to have them back at home. We had all the financials. Yeah, the kids get used to it, th- you know, this lifestyle yeah. of living. Yeah. Oh, my kids are so adaptable. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so. and I guess another question people would be wondering: yep. budget-wise, yep. do you like, yep. feed it? Yep. You got to feed for? Is it something you plan for, or you just oh, do? Mate, the, <laughs> nowadays, the food is just ridiculous. Yeah. So the way we financially travel Australia is I repair caravans we travel. Even so better. I do, I do mobile caravan servicing repairs. Yeah. I'll put my sign out when we rock up in a caravan park, whatever, and just wait for the knock on the door. And yeah, good. Where I go. Happy day. And, and Amy does a bit of social media management for businesses. Yeah, good. So that's a bit of a regular income. So it's enough to enough to keep us travelling yeah. and exploring, mate. And we'll, oh, beautiful. We'll keep pushing the boat out as far as we can. Yeah, love it, Tom. And mate, any tips? What have you learned along the way? You've been you're on the road now for a lot longer than what you thought. Is there a couple little things you've thought? Yep. Ha! I've learnt that. Shouldn't do that. Yeah, should yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically try not to overthink everything. Yep. It's especially with your setup, just you don't need the, the all the bells and whistles. If you can't afford that, mate, people travel in a tent, in a pop up tent, yep. people travelling rooftops and all that kind of stuff around Australia. If you want to travel, you can make it happen. And just don't overthink things. Take as little as possible with you because I find the more stuff you take, the more it weighs you down, the more cluttered you feel, and you're just going to be starting to throw stuff out as you travel anyway. Yeah, and, and it's a common thing. I guess you guys, you've, you're making friends and, and friends for life on the road. Yeah, oh, we yeah. I mean, we've just we just parked up next to some friends of ours in Ely Beach that we meet a couple of places around Australia. Yep. And we're gonna we're gonna sit together for the next three weeks here in Ely and just. Let the kids all play together and that kind of stuff and do a whole lot, lot of activities and then we might yeah. plan up to meet another 12 months time somewhere else in Australia. Yeah, that isn't that fantastic? Mate, is there, you've been a fair few places. Is there anywhere yeah. on the list you haven't been that you've said, we've got to get there? You're oh, telling Amy, we've yeah. got to do it, Dale. Yeah, Arnhem Land. I'm, I really want to get up to Arnhem Land. Yeah, beautiful. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Just trying to think of, we've pretty much been to most, places. Yeah. I know, you're lucky bugger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> lucky bugger. There's lots of places we'd love to go again. Yeah. There's places you can go and do things differently. 
slow it down a little. But no, nah, good on you, mate. And is there an insight? What's your vision? You don't know. You're just going to keep going. Mate, we, we just go with the flow, to be honest. Yeah, what a good attitude. It all, yeah, it all comes down to how we feel as a family, mate. If we have yep. an open conversation. If the kids say, no, nah, we're done, yep. then we'll pull up stumps. But we were meant to be doing a big crossing through Central Australia this year, back over to WA. Yep. But the kids said, oh, we wanted to stick on the East Coast a little bit and see some family and friends. So we said, all right, let's yeah. do that. Happy days, look at you. This year and, yeah. ah, good on you, Tom. Hey, mate, for all those out there listening, where can they? Where can we follow your travels and catch up with you, send you a question if they want to, all of the yeah. above? Yeah, we're called Four Boys in a Caravan, so the number four, yep. and Boys in a Caravan, so we're on Instagram and Facebook. We do a tiny little bit of YouTube, but with the four kids and trying to work, we, we struggle to get yeah. time to do all this. <laughs> I get it. YouTube, I get it. I get it. Hey, mate, it's been great. To, it's been great to chat. Say good day to Amy and the kids for us, and we'll probably yeah, catch up with you in a few weeks or a few months down the track and see how you're travelling. Absolutely, mate. That'll be great. Good on you, Tom. All right. Thanks, Scotty. <laughs> Uh, it's that time of the podcast to catch up with the great Harry Fisher, fighter fork all the way from Western Australia. How are you, my friend? Bloody magic, mate. Bloody magic. <laughs> Loving it over here. Oh, you always... I'm going to go and pack my camper when I get back. Oh, I can always... I can feel the smile in your face when you talk. You're just living in a great part of the world <laughs> and you're doing what you love. How good's that? Oh, it's not much better than being an accountant like you used to be. Oh, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Hey, mate, as I say, the people are just loving what we're chatting about. People want to know, what are some things, if they're travelling away on, on their, you know, two, three, four-week trip, just a couple of little essentials, little things they must travel with when it comes to cooking around a fire, just three or four little things you should have in your cupboard. Yeah, no worries. This is obviously ingredients, it's not, not so much gear. Yeah. Look, I the things I always carry, I always carry citral oil, like a rice bran oil or a canola oil or something like that, that doesn't actually add flavour to food. Yep. Olive oil is more of a thick, more of a finishing oil, and it's got the smoke points quite low, so it can burn quite easily. So yeah, I, I like to use a bit of yeah some sort of flavorless oil. I always carry a bit of soy sauce just in case you know need to do a bit of sashimi or something yeah. like that, or just it just adds salt. That, that's the other thing is if you run out of salt. Soy is a great substitute with a bit of extra umami flavor. I personally always carry a bit of fish sauce and a bit of oyster sauce as well, yep. just to add some sweetness and some, some depth to things. And then look, you know there are obviously there's pepper and salt and all that kind of stuff. I also love a bit of mustard. Ooh, um, yum, yep. Yeah, a bit of sriracha, just in case I want a bit of spice in it. And uh, sriracha adds a lot of garlic, so which, yeah. that goes really well, particularly in Asian cooking. Oh, look at you. Um, and then, yeah, on my list here, there's one thing that has never actually left it, and that is make sure you've got a beer. Yeah, or well, in, <laughs> in my wife's case, a little glass of bubbles. She loves a champagne or Absolutely. a shardy. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. So, mate, where are we going cooking-wise today? What are, we, what are we rustling up? I reckon let's go for a bit of a comfort food, a one-pot wonder. So this is a, a dish called Trafard, and that is a, it's it butchered the name, but because it's a French name, Trafard or something. And that is really a fancy word for saying potatoes, cheese, and bacon in a pot. Oh, yum, yum. Really bloody good. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> so you, you start off, you dice up some spuds, a bit of oil in, the, in your camp oven, and you want to get about 70% of the heat on top, Big sun underneath, and you just leave them in there with a, with a fair bit of heat until they start to crisp up. They're just, just starting to brown. And as they start to brown, you dice up some bacon, throw it in all over it, and then just leave that for another, say, oh, 15, 20 minutes until the bacon starts to brown. So now you've got browning potatoes, browning bacon. And as it's starting, starting to look slightly crispy, you just throw in some grated cheese on top and let that cheese sink through it all and create a crust on the bottom. Then finally, knock up some peas, however you like to do it. Or if you want to be really lazy, before you throw the che- before you throw the cheese in, put a layer of peas underneath. Then put the cheese on top. It'll actually cook inside the cheese, and they do- they they come out really well. When that cheese has gone crispy, take it out, serve it up, ugly as hell, and so delicious. <laughs> oh, man. It sounds like a good one for the kids too. Simple, oh, and, and the yeah, kids that, are just the kids my, would love that's it. My childhood, right there. Is it? Yeah, oh, that's, every week with you is my childhood right there. It's just like, every time I go home after chatting with you, I say to the wife, "I got something new to cook. I got something new to cook." Oh my! Yeah, no, that's a that's a that, that genuinely. I was a really skinny kid, and my mum was told by the doctor to give me something hearty, and she thought up this dish. And she's a chef, and yeah, it worked. I started to put on some weight, and I was a very happy little boy. Oh, look, I was a little pudgy little kid, and I just kept eating anyway. But I oh, <laughs> listening to you, I'm going to continue. Okay, if you want Harry's book, and it's an absolute ripper, Fighter Fork Adventure Cooking, 
It's pretty simple. Jump onto the website. You can get it online at everythingcaravancamping.com.au. Good on you, Harry. Catch up next week, brother. All right. Cheers, mate. Let's go. Now, don't forget to head over to the Everything Caravan and Camping podcast page, everythingcaravancamping.com.au. Sign up to the newsletter for your chance to win a $50 voucher to spend on the ECC Marketplace. And don't forget to catch up on all of our ECC episodes. You go to where you get your podcasts, or you can head over to everythingcaravanandcamping.com.au. Well, that's us for another week, and don't forget, we want to hear from you. We'd love to get you on the show with us. So if you're planning a trip, if you're out on a trip as we speak and you're listening to this podcast, or if you've got any question to do with anything we've spoken about, and if we haven't spoken about it and you want to know about it, make sure you send us an email, podcast at everythingcaravancamping.com.au. Be safe out on the roads. See you next time. Come on. Let's go. They've got everything. Everything caravan and camping. Let's go. They've got everything.